Hello friends, welcome back. I hope the previous couple of sessions were very interesting and useful. The first session we dealt with the fundamentals and we then went on to an error which commonly occurs when you install the Android Studio and I also clarified how do you overcome that error. And in this session we are going to go with the Hello World program with Android. Your first app is what you are going to build. You should be very excited. I am going to show you the way you can build it with emulator you can test it and also with phone you can test it real time. I am going to show you both the ways practically and I am sure it will be interesting. Well assuming that you have set up everything you are all set to go. Once you have installed everything the moment you click the Android Studio launch button you will be into this particular screen. You can see that the screen is visible in front of you. You got projects, customize, plugin and learn Android Studio options available there. You can click new project for you to launch a new project and you can have options out there as you can see. For phone or tablet you can develop an app. For Wear OS, Android TV, Automotive, what is that you are going to develop an app for? I have selected phone and you could see that I have selected an empty activity and I need to name the activity. You can see that I am going to name it. This is the name of the activity and this helps you in creating an empty activity. You can name it anyways and you could see that the way we are leaving it or we can rename it as well. I am going to do a renaming option for you. My first underscore Android is what I am going to name it Android app and package name you can leave it as such and we are going to mention the save location and the language can be Java or Kotlin. We will see with Java first and then we can go to Kotlin and the SDK that you are choosing. Which version of Android are you choosing? You can choose the latest version but the problem could be many of the phones might not support it. So it's better to go ahead with medium versions like Android 5.0 which would be very helpful for you to get things done with ease. Most of the phones would support that. So I'm going to take up one of those and I have selected that and I'm clicking finish right now. So it is finished. Now this will be the screen that you would get immediately once you are are done with the initial process. It will take time for you to get the thing set up and you are seeing that the Gradle is getting built and please launch the event log there. Now we need to understand what is the Gradle. Android Studio uses Gradle which is nothing but an advanced build toolkit. This will help you to automate and manage the build process while allowing you to define flexible custom build configurations. So this is very very important which helps you in building it and there is a lot of difference actually that you need to understand between the Gradle and Maven. Please understand Maven is based on fixed and a linear model of faces but Gradle is based on graph of task dependencies. We will talk about it a little later to, to also compare it with compiler. Is Gradle a compiler? Not exactly. Gradle is not equivalent to the compiler. Compilers are meant for translating the high level language into machine code or other intermediate code representation like bytecode. But Gradle is a build system that packages the code for you and makes it ready for compilation. So please understand there is a difference between Gradle and Maven, Gradle and compiler. The second one is most important for you at this stage. We will talk about rest of the things later. Now for you to understand what is the difference between Gradle and compiler, I have explained you that and you could see that it is still building for the first time when you are launching, it may take a lot of time. So have some patience and if your system is really fast, it has got good amount of RAM and good speed, it would probably get set faster, but otherwise it could be a little slow. Once it is all set, you will get the complete event log available for you and you can see that please keep an eye on the event log. This event log is something which will help you in clearly understanding if things are going fine. I repeat, this event log is the place where you can clearly get to understand if things are really going fine, right? And the important point that you need to understand out here is you need to know the files that are available for you. Now you can see that here the Gradle sync is finished and you could see that everything is updated here. Now we are all set to go. I have minimized it clearly. Now, please understand, we have got device manager option available, emulator option available, all in the right hand side that you can see. But we need to go to this part which my pointer is right now moving, where you will get the complete details about the files that we need to use and what are the files that are available for this current process. This is very, very important for you to understand. Now, I am going to this Android and you can see that the options what are all available. Project, I am clicking that as an option because that's what we need to know. And inside that, if you see, we have got Gradle and 
you can explore each of this actually step by step you can explore but app is the one that we need to focus on i'm going to explore that as well and inside that you can see src so that src inside that we have got main test and all those options and you can see that the main activity is there which is very very important that's the file that you have in front of you right now android manifest.xml is available inside res this is very important so we have got three files which you need to have focus on the first one is the main activity.java the second one is activity underscore main dot xml and the third one is android manifest.xml so forget about everything else as of now you can see that this activity underscore main dot xml is available under res under layout so the term layout itself is clearly telling you that it is going to be connected to layout and the view and the structure you can view it as a code or a split or a design whatever you want you can do it there so you can see that i am going with multiple options code option is better for you at initial level to understand what is there in the code all right now what is this activity underscore uh, main dot xml all about you can see that it's going to help you in providing the complete structure as in what is the layout size layout width layout height all those things also the content the text view is something which you can see here you can see that there is a word called as text view and the text view is something which is going to help you in displaying the text message on the screen to the user which means hello world is the content that i'm putting there right so that's the one that's going to be displayed to the user and you can specify the size style color everything and text view is the is the point that you are discussing right now and that's going to help you in that so this activity underscore main dot xml is a very important file which will help you in displaying the content nicely to the customer to the user that's what i have explained you right now so we can talk about this layout and all those things a little later don't worry as of now it is too early for you to probably spend a lot of time out here so i'm getting into the next one the main activity dot java what is it this is a very important file for every activity there will be a dot java file and associated xml file would be there so we have discussed the associated xml file first and there is the first file which will be looked in into the moment you start building the moment your uh, content starts getting in this is the file that it, that that will be looked in into android manifest.xml this is the first file that this is the content that tells you where to go on so there the label the name the icon all these details can be given and here you can see that there is something called as intent hyphen filter that tells you what is the main activity there will be one main activity file there can be multiple activity files number of screens is equal to number of activity i told you already and here there will be one main activity per app and this intent filter defines that which activity is the main activity you can see that here we have only one screen so the main activity dot java is going to be your main file i have not complicated it at all don't worry about much right now all these are available by default for you but you need to know three things we have got three files here activity underscore main dot xml main activity dot java android manifest dot xml the android manifest dot xml tells you where to go first and it has the detail about the main file the main activity dot java file and the main activity dot java file is the first activity that we have seen and i have explained you what it is activity underscore main dot xml it gives you the complete information as in what are all the content to be displayed now i am going to run this file for that i need emulator what is emulator i can go to device manager and i can select the phone i want you can see that we need to select one of the models of the phone and you can download that particular emulator into your system it may take time for you to really download the complete file see that it is 1.1 gb out there so i prefer you to get things downloaded ready and you can go with this level so i have done that i have just shown you how to download i have already downloaded an emulator and you are going to see that right now uh, i will show you a, a easiest version where i can download it with say 700 mb or something so now i am downloading it i prefer you to keep it downloaded ready and that common emulator can be used for multiple process so see to that here it's downloading it may take a little bit of time i am fast forwarding it for your reference and now you can see that it is all done so it will get set the emulator will get set right now so it will unzip it will get set it is going to be ready for you to go ahead with the operation so what did i do i just opened my project i had three files i selected the emulator the emulator used to be installed so you can select the emulator of your choice but make sure you keep it ready when you go for the next time every time you cannot keep multiple emulators installed 
so it is unzipping it may take a little bit of time so have a little bit of patience over there so once it is all done you can get that emulator available for you and you can go ahead and select that and there is where things will be easier for you i'm selecting that and you can select which view do you want portrait or landscape i have selected portrait and i'm finishing it that's all your emulator is ready right now understand your emulator is ready right now and you will see that right in front of you pixel 4 is the emulator that i have selected i am launching it right now so you will get the emulator launched it will be just looking like your android phone so it will get appearing in front of you over few seconds and that's what is available here connecting to the emulator you got your android phone in front of you it is superb feature that you can really love you will definitely love for a simple reason that you get whatever phone you want to test and you can have as many number of emulators tested with your apps and you can feel you can look uh, how it looks like in multiple phones so that's the most important point that i'd like to convey here now what happens now i need to run my code the app has to be run right i got three files it's under a project that's what is totally called as app and here you can see that pixel 4 ap4 ap24 is the emulator and there is a button here right this button you can see right that's the one that we are going to run so we will click that button and once we click that the app will be run in your phone's emulator you can see that out here you are seeing the app right here my first underscore android app is the name of the project that i have given name of the app that i have given activity i have given so it's available right in front of you and it has worked fine so this is how you can set up things you can run your first app hello world is available but now sorry sir i'm bored with uh, uh, this particular kind of emulator i want it to be tested in phone do we have an option certainly yes i'm going to show you that right now here you see we have got the pixel the phone i mean the emulator that we have selected here is pixel 4 ap24 that's what you are seeing here and all the code that we have run the first code for an instance what we have run is hello world and that's appearing here this is in the emulator i do not want emulator and i want to use my phone as emulator is what your thought could be so in that case we can connect our android phone and we can see how things work here i'm going to do that for you right now i am going to connect my android phone out here you can see that i have got a usb cable at one end and other end of the cable is connected to my phone here now first time when you are using it you have to do some settings and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go to settings and in the settings you have about phone and in that you can see software information and in that when you see there is something called as bill number you need to press it few times and when you touch it few times you get something called as developer mode enabled i have already enabled it when i tested it so i got a message i am going to do it again you see that i got a message no need developer mode has been already enabled so when you are doing it for when you are doing it for the first time you are expected to do this so that the developer options will get enabled for you so once it is done you have done 50 percent of the task now come back and you need to go to the developer options which has been newly available right now for you it would not have been available earlier so click that and in that if you see if you scroll a little bit there is something called as usb debugging so the usb debugging has to be enabled by default it would not have been enabled and the moment you enable it you will get a message the usb debugging related message will come and you will also get this allow usb debugging and you will get a rse uh, key fingerprint something like that just accept it every time when you connect your phone with the laptop for debugging purpose you get that message and you have to accept it well once it is done 50 percent of the task 60 percent of the task is over now you will be able to see the samsung phone there and it will be updated in few seconds i'm going to show you that right now and you could see that earlier it was pixel which was emulator now what we have here is a phone which is samsung that's what i have shown you some time back now i'm going to run the code for you whatever code hello world we have here i'm going to run it and the output will be visible in the phone so i have clicked that and it is running now you are going to see that here in front of you and hello world has come in the samsung phone that's all now my phone is used as good as emulator and that's pretty easy for you so in case you have any issues or if you want to see it, how exactly things look like in the phone you can use this option as well thank you so 
uh, that's all. I have explained you clearly what is what here, and I hope you understood how to launch the Hello World in Android, both in emulator and phone. I hope you like the session. In case you have any questions, you are free to ask me in the chat. I'll be very happy to clarify. Thank you very much for following the channel. If you like the channel, kindly subscribe. I definitely am very thankful about your support. Thank you.